Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's Monday, the 4th of September, and day one of the international break. But listen, as always, we're going to find something to talk about because it is my job, <laughs> and I love Leeds United. Um, but listen, if you can uh, uh, support me during this international break, please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, hit the notification bell, it all helps the algorithm yeah um so please do that for me uh today we've got a few discussion points i just had a look at some of the Leeds united related news both positive and negative and thought you know what we can talk about this a uh, bit of an opinion piece if you like uh, and i want to know your thoughts in the comments as well uh when we do go through this so without further ado please smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel get your comments in and of course hit that notification bell and let's get into it I don't care if it's one nil. What if we keep down? 13th in the do championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be. Oh, when, when have we got leads? So, folks, first of all, I want to talk about Jaden Anthony. As we know, Jaden Anthony is going to be spending a season on loan in the Championship with Leeds United to help secure their promotion back to the Premier League. Now, there's been a, a massive misconception, I think, from a lot of the Leeds United uh, fan base. And this isn't copium, by the way. Uh, Jaden Anthony isn't a bad player. Um, someone actually messaged me the other day to say that, oh, certain people were saying he's third choice. Certain people were saying he can't get a look in. It's wrong. It's lies. Jaden Anthony had played every single Premier League game so far this season for Iriola before Sinistera was brought in. Uh, there was even pieces out there in the press to say that this guy was arguably their best player this season so far. I just want to remind people as well, the last time Jaden Anthony was in the Championship under Scott Parker, arguably a much worse manager than Daniel Farker and not playing a, a great system, uh, got 14 goal involvements, 8 goals and 6 assists. If he can uh, replicate that in this Leeds United side, alongside the likes of Piro, Rutter, Nonto, Somerville, then we're cooking on gas. He slots straight in at left wing for me. I would play Nonto out right and Somerville through the middle and then have Piro up top. That would be my preferred lineup uh, for the Millwall game, for sure. Daniel Farker was speaking after the game, after the 0-0 draw uh, against Chef Wednesday and said that Jaden Anthony was really desperate to join the football club. Now, I'm not sure I agree on that because a lot of the stories coming out as the uh, deadline grew closer was that Anthony wasn't keen on the move and you can sort of understand it. He's not because of Leeds United, obviously we know. Come on, let's not beat around the bush. Leeds are a bigger club than Bournemouth. But ultimately, it's Premier League football and he'd played in every Premier League game up to that point. So he's probably thinking, me? Are you sure? Um, so I'm not sure I agree with Daniel Farker when he's made them comments, but he's going to say that, right? But one thing he did add is that Jaden Anthony will play a very important role in this side, and it wouldn't surprise me if he starts when we return against Millwall. Ultimately, this is a man with a point to prove. His parent club have said to him, yeah, we prefer this Sinistera guy, which I understand. But as motivation goes, can you get better motivation than that to prove people wrong? I mean, me secretly, I know he's still our player and I never want to wish injury on people, but I hope he has the same sort of problems he did at Leeds United. Because if we're being honest, he barely played. I really rate him, but I'd love him to go to Bournemouth, barely play, and then Jaden Anthony play 41 games, you know, and, and get upwards of 14 goal involvements. And we can sit there at the end of the season with a cigar in our mouth saying, you know what, we did all right. And there's a key point here that Daniel Farker echoed is that he's got championship experience. That's the one thing for me in this side we are lacking massively. The average age, I think, was about 23.9 or something on the weekend. If you compare that with Chef Wednesday, I know they're one of the oldest teams, but it was nearly 28. You know, you can't undervalue experience. So the fact that he's come in and he's been promoted and actually gone through the playoffs, um, I think it's 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 value add really if I'm being totally honest okay he's not as good as Sinistera but he can bring a lot of qualities to this side and experience being one of them and just to give you some more positives on the lad it was only January he was being linked with a move back to Arsenal this was title chasing Arsenal so let's not pretend this guy's a mug because I've seen a lot of it and it's quite frustrating this is a guy who statistically according to the numbers is similar to the likes of Keane Dewsbury Hall Jeffrey Schlupp. Now, of course, them names might not set the world alight, but let's not pretend we're getting a scrub here because we're not. And I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong, not least his parent club. Staying in the forward areas at Legion United, but moving on 
slightly too. Arguably a forgotten man. I want to talk about Patrick Bamford. I've seen a piece this morning talking about Patrick Bamford's future and how Leeds United may look to move him on in January. Um, I'd argue that's probably the best for all parties. What I will say, though, I don't think anyone's willing to buy Patrick Bamford. The lad is broken. Um, but I just wanted to discuss this point because there are still some uh, Bamford apologists out there. Um, I used to be one of them. I see now the likes of Piro Rutter, even Matteo Joseph being ahead of the lad. He just can't stay fit. But he's a good player. I'll always be grateful for his his time. But and and listen, it's not one person's responsibility that Leeds United went down. It was failings from top to bottom. But I think if he, you know, scores the pen and if he gets the goal against Leicester, it looks totally different. Um, but ultimately, he wasn't the man for the moment, you know. And uh, if we compare it with who we've got up front when we actually play him there. In Joel Pirro, if he has any of them chances that fall to Bamford, he finds the back of the net. I mean, it's got to the point that he's not even having questions asked about him in the press conference no more. How many times, how long has it been now? Is like, uh, when's Bamford back? Oh, he's a little way off. No one even asked the question because he's a bit of a forgotten man now. Uh, I'd love nothing more for him to come back to play alongside Piro to get goals and assists, but it's it's just not going to happen. And yeah, uh, I just wanted to know your thoughts in the comments. Just like, will Jaden Anthony be a success? Is there a way back for Patrick Bamford? Now, the next bit I want to talk about is, um, yeah, it was quite infuriating, actually, as I, as I read this article, if you could call it that, that was uh, published uh, earlier on today by a guy uh, by the name of Callum Davis. I don't, I don't want to hammer him too much, but ultimately, his, his whole rhetoric, his whole piece says, uh, the signing of Glenn Kamara could mean the end for 50k per week dud. And I'm like, who's he talking about here? Like, which player at Leeds United is still on 50k or anywhere close to it? Well, that player he's talking about is Pascal Straug. He's using stats from the previous season to say that arguably, when Kamara comes in, we're going to see Ampadu go back to centre-back. Tell me you've not watched Leeds without telling me you've not watched Leeds. Pascal Straug's been great this season. Arguably, Byron aside, the best defender in the side. In terms of progressive passes, progressive carries, he's up there with the best in the division. There was one weekend he'd done more than Harry Winks, and that's his whole fecking job. Pascal Strauch's a defender. Also, Ethan Ampadu has looked to cut above any player in his position in this division. Why, for the sake of Glenn Kamara, would we drop Strauch, put Ampadu at centre-back and have Kamara playing in his position? It's wild takes left, right and centre. I suppose I'm the putz for actually clicking the, the story because that's what it's there for. Clickbait City, etc. But I respect it. I respect the grind. Um, but ultimately, come on, man. Do better. You must do better. At least if you're going to write about Leeds United, then watch the game and see that what you're writing is, mm, yeah, I'm way off the pace here. Because like you're getting paid for that piece. It's absolute insanity. I'm still convinced as well that with Gruev and Ampadu, I think we might see Kamara play as an 8 slash 10, being the man to carry the ball from midfield and maybe look to assist. And that might mean dropping, you know, some of Nonto Rutter, whoever it is, Jaden Anthony James, to fit him in there. But I think we could see a free in midfield. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, but it's ludicrous to think that Leeds United brought Kamara in to put Ampadu at centre-back and drop Pascal Strout. Insane. Please do better, Callum Davis, or just stop writing about Leeds altogether because you don't know what you're talking about, pal. And I do think something needs to change in that forward line um, because, you know, even if it's just putting Piro up top, bringing one of them out, not having as many wingers or keyboards as we like to call them on this channel, um, because Graham Smith did a piece about, you know, things you might have missed if you were not at the game or if you were just all focused on where the ball was, was how visibly annoyed Ethan Ampadu was with the forward line and their lack of movement. Because let's be honest, for me, Ethan Ampadu, was probably the best player on the pitch on uh, Saturday against Chef Wednesday. It was just unbelievable. There's not anyone close. And um, yeah, he seemed to be visibly frustrated with the lack of movement up top. So it's something that needs to be worked on. And, and maybe bringing in a Kamara might might enable to do that. Maybe even using Jaden Anthony on left and, and playing uh, Somerville more, more central might, might work. But something's going to have to give. I'm buzzing about the clean sheet. Took stick for it. Don't know why, but it is what it is. Football's about opinions. But something needs to change in that forward line because it's two games on the spin now, Salford and Chef Wednesday, both poorer sides than us, you know, um, lesser level of quality and we've failed to score. Um, and I dare say, over the course of the championship season, we'll face more systems like that than we will do when we put four past Ipswich. So he's got 
a tough job on his hands, but I have every faith that Daniel Farker will make the right switches tactically and structurally to make sure we start seeing wins on the board soon. Just while we're talking about structures and systems and tactical setups, you know, just a warning, the lads did say that Piro might not suit this system. I'm not writing him off by any stretch of the imagination, not a cat in hell's chance. And Daniel Farker has to be the man to unlock him in this side, in this setup. Um, but one player um, that has gone on to, to leave what was for me, arguably one of the worst structural setups we've ever had under Jesse Marsh uh, to, to go to Spain is Mark Rocker. And he is smashing it out there. Hat tip to uh, Mr. McGilligan for that one. Um, but a lot of people did say this, that he's not a bad player and it's more so the system and the Spanish media are currently raving about this guy. Uh, he's on loan like a lot of them. He probably won't return but I would argue had he have stayed um, he would be better suited to to this system that we play under Daniel Farker for sure. He can always pass the ball. Um, listen we move, don't we? It is what it is. But yeah, we, we we have to remember that sometimes, you know. That's why when people say, oh, just put him in the nine and it'll instantly get better. I'm not always sure that's the case. Um, but I suppose it is better to play players in the position than not, right? Of course, as I said, it is the international break. So just a bit of international news concerning Leeds United. Archie Gray has been pulled from the international squad. Apparently, you know, fitness concerns, knocks or whatever. I think it's it's smart from the football club to keep him in-house, protect him. He's already played far too many games than he should have probably at his age. He's obviously going to see the likes of Gruev Kamara come into the side. There might have even been a word in his ear to say, look, you know, you've got your place in the side. You don't want to lose it, you know. Also, he's going to gain from this valuable experience that Gruev and Kamara can give him alongside Ampadu. Um, so I just think it's really smart. Um, I hate to talk about that manage, but but Alex Ferguson used to do it a lot with his players. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad Archie Gray is staying put. Gives him time to to get to new, know his new teammates, etc. I would love if the, none of them were on international duty, but it is what it is. But, yeah. Uh, listen, that's your news, if you like. The Daily Leads, maybe it's back. It isn't. But, yeah, we'll talk about things as and when they happen. But um, I know some of you will miss the content, so... I'm filling that that space for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and all the points that are made. Big one being, can Jade and Anthony be a success? And is there a way back for Patrick Bamford? Thanks as always for watching the Just Joe Football Show. Don't forget to like the video and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.